Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. Uh, But we're going to go ahead and get started uh, and read the story of the Magi visiting the Messiah. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests, the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of, out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out them uh, exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. And said, After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until they stopped over the place where the child was. And the star had had seen when it rose went ahead of them until they stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing, and to heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plants. Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove. 
the glories of His righteousness and the wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His love. Everybody come here, come here, come here, come here. Y'all did good. Y'all did good. Y'all ready? Then one more round of applause for them. Thank you. Thank you. You can grab grab one of the gifts. Grab a gift. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, we do not normally do topical teachings. We are a verse by verse, chapter by chapter teaching church. So as we move into the new year, uh, we will be in the book of First Peter, and we'll be in the book of First Peter until we finish the book of First Peter. And then when we get done with the book of First Peter, we're going to Second Peter. So I think all of 2024 on Sundays will be in those two books, so be ready. Um, and we just kind of go verse by verse as we go through them. So we got a couple more Advent teachings uh, that we got uh, up until next Sunday, and then we'll have a, a message for for the vision for the the year coming up and uh, so today what I decided to do is I wanted to take a look we've kind of looked already at the scriptures uh, those that have been here uh, as we've looked at the story of Joseph and uh, we've looked at the story of Mary we've also looked at the story of, of Zacharias and Elizabeth um, and we, we showed you in the Old Testament and the law, uh, uh, the law, and the the prophets, and in the Psalms, the prophecies that were fulfilled, we've shown you proof. The question now has to be: Is what is your response to the birth of Christ? There's a question that Jesus asked in the book of Mark. He asked very bluntly, "Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am?" You have to be able to answer that question for yourself. You have to be able to answer that question for yourself as a believer. And somebody, if you're not following or you never follow Jesus, you have to be able to answer that question. Because guess what? On Judgment Day, if you hadn't, it's too late. If you're taken from this world tomorrow and you haven't chosen to follow Christ, it's too late. You can't get before him and go, hey, I believe in you now. That's not how it works. You have to believe in, believe in Christ here and re re repent of your sins. And so there should be a response from every one of us. Why do you think there's such a turmoil in Israel right now? The birthplace, if you think about Palestine, Bethlehem. That's where the, the, the king of kings is born. It was announced some 700 years before his birth that Jesus was coming. Born in Bethlehem. The king of Israel. Not the king of Palestine. Not the king of Gaza. The king of Israel from Bethlehem. God has sent his son into this world we celebrate that every year. But a lot of times what our response is to Christmas is the retail side of Christmas. I can tell you I was in San Antonio yesterday. I have never seen so many outbursts, bad parenting, couples that need couple counseling, Arguing in HEB, arguing in Walmart, fighting over money. That's not what Christmas is about. They have the wrong response when it comes to Christmas. See, when we look at this, we're going to look at, there's actually ten responses. And we're going to go, probably go through about six of those today. The rest of them I'll go through on Wednesday. I'll have a teaching up. We won't have service on Wednesday, but I'll have a teaching that will be available on YouTube and Facebook on Wednesday. 
And then on on Sunday, we'll be here next Sunday, so don't think you're going to, well, we're not meeting. We are meeting. Um, And so we are going to look at the first one, which is Zacharias' response. Zachariah was the one that, uh, who is John the Baptist's father. He was a religious leader. Zechariah was, uh, when we think about Zacharias, he was somebody who got to go light the incense in the Holy of Holies. Something that you could only do once in your lifetime as a religious leader. That was it. That was your big, big thing, to go light incense. I told you about them having bells on the uniforms of the priest. Why? Because if they had sin... They dropped dead right there. And what they would do, because nobody else could go in the Holy of Holies, they would have a rope tied to the ankle, and they would drag them out. And I ask you the question, would you go, would you be the next one up? Can you imagine the guy who's on deck as they're pulling that guy out by a rope? Man, it would make me think twice, right? But Zacharias, he was... The father of John the Baptist, his wife Elizabeth was barren. His wife Elizabeth was barren and and she was blessed with child. And Zacharias asked the question, how can this be? How can a man of God who studies the Bible, who's worked his whole life to go light the incense, ask the angel of the Lord, how can this be? I believe that's where a lot of religious people are today this Christmas. And what I mean by that is you have a lot of head knowledge, but you don't have it in the heart. You don't have a relationship with Christ. Zacharias, the angel, Gabriel says, hey, uh, dude, you're not talking till the baby's born. And I'm sure the wife, I told you all, the wife was probably like, good. Right? Good. I'm sure there's a couple of us where we need an angel of the Lord just to quiet us down a little bit. But when he does talk, he praises God. So Zacharias' response to Christ was to preach salvation. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. And he prophesies. God gives him the words to say. And it's in Luke chapter 1, verses 67. It says, Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he has spoken by mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember the holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare His ways. And here's the key, verse, thir- uh, verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation to His people by the remissions of their sins. Through the tender mercy of God with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in the darkness and the shadow of of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. We see Zacharias prophesying about the remissions and repentance of sin and, and talking about salvation. But the first words out of his mouth... He's reminding us that it is through remissions of sin. Every one of us are sinful. Now right now, in your head, you're thinking of all the stuff you've done this week already. Like, I'm not sinful. No, you know. 
God knows. We're all sinners. What's the first thing that Jesus preached when He started His ministry? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Repent. Deal with your sins. Turn to Me. There's a purpose for His, his birth. We know that John the Baptist prepares the way for Jesus and we see a uh, Zacharias excited about salvation coming to not only the nation of Israel but to the Gentiles. God's not done with Israel. And you have to remember that Israel is the center of the earth. Jerusalem. Because Jesus is coming back. He will return. And, and it's not going to be the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb of God. It will be the Lion of Judah who will judge. See, we forget that. We all love the cuddly baby Jesus. But you don't want the Jesus that's tattooed. The name that's tattooed and, and the sword comes out. To slay. To me, I think for whatever reason that, that Jesus is going to be more metal when He comes back. Anybody who listens to hard rock music, it's like He's going to be more metal. He came in soft rock. He's going, he, when He returns, He's coming back as metal. Like He's coming back to deal with this earth and to judge this earth. It's punk rock. Like to walk with Christ is punk rock. Because you, everything that you do when you respond to Christ and walk with Him, you go absolutely against the culture. You're, you're, you're punk rock. You didn't even know it. If you're walking with Him, you stand outside the culture. The angel's response was, with, was one of praise. We see in Luke chapter 2, verses 8-14, through 14, it says, Now they're... We're in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. See, it's not for some, it's to all, for everyone. So the gospel, as much as we talk about pro-Palestine and, and Hamas, Hamas needs Jesus. Are you praying for Him, Christian? They need Christ. They're following a false religion. There are people that are on the ground there trying to share the gospel and giving up their lives for Christ. But we don't talk about that. See, the angels were praising God. It says, For there is a born to you this day the city of David who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And that should be our, our, our praise. Our praise should be to the Lord. Our praise should be like, what are you praising this Christmas? What are you praising? Are you praising the retail side of Christmas? Are you praising the, that PS5 that's going to show up in your underneath the... I don't think anybody's got PS5 money this year. Some of y'all don't have Nintendo 64. It's like, it's been a rough year. Right? It's been tough. But we praise the wrong things sometimes. You know what praise does? It actually lifts your spirit. It lifts your spirit. In Psalm 42, verses 5 and 6, it says, Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon and Mount Mizor. 
As Jesus followers, one of the things we have to do is take our eyes off of our troubles and put them on who? Christ. Sometimes what happens is we're dealing with some heavy things, whether it's financial or it's health or death. I had a friend of mine who actually just found out he's having open heart surgery on Tuesday. Busted his ankle. Something showed up on the when they were looking at whether or not they're going to have to do surgery on the ankle. And they were like, we got to check your heart. He found out Friday. So he's getting his chest cracked open on December 26. You know, at, at the end of the day, you don't know how much time you have. But you need to be praising God for every moment. Because you, you go, well, how can you praise God and they're going to open my chest up? I can praise God because if it wasn't for him busting his ankle, he wouldn't have known and he could have had a heart attack. Because when your widow maker is, is over a certain percentage, you just drop dead. There's no getting to the hospital. But he's praising God. That's why he says in that verse is so important is, is hope in God. Hope in God. Praise also puts us in, the, in God's presence. In Psalm 140 verse 13, Surely the righteous shall give thanks to you, your name, the upright shall dwell in your presence. We have to get into the presence of God. When our, our faith is not built on feelings and emotions. Okay? Get this. Because feelings and emotions get a lot of people in trouble. Your faith is built on a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you have to be in the presence of God every day. He's with you all the time. But He wants time with you. He wants you to get into His presence. Open His Word. Spend time in prayer. Spend time praising Him, worshiping, putting on worship music, fellowship, breaking bread. All these things. That's all being in the presence of God. But when we allow the, the F word of the church, feelings... Yeah, y'all thought, oh man, what kind of church did I walk into? I'm going to tell you what, Pastor Ken Graves, I, I, I told my brother-in-law about him a long time ago. He, he looks like the bounty guy, the one on the, the paper towels. Yeah, he looks just like that. At Pastor Ken Graves out of Calvary Chapel, Bangor, Maine, and he has the roughest voice. And that's his thing. He goes, I do not like the F word in the church. And I was like, what? Feelings. It's not based on your feelings or emotions. It's, it's faith in Christ Jesus. It's God's grace, God's mercy that you're even here breathing today. You have that to praise, right? You woke up this morning. But we forget that. Praise also allows us to, uh, to put the right uh, perspective on our situation with God. Like sometimes we can magnify the wrong thing. In Psalm 69, 30, it says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll make our problems bigger than God. The things that I'm going through, the things that are happening to me, nobody can fix them. God can. God can. Are you going to get into His presence? Are you going to praise Him? Are you going to spend time with Him? To understand like that, that I need to magnify God and not this other thing. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us to find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 